Explorer, you've arrived at the threshold of an epic journey where self-love meets fitness. Gather your courage as we seek to challenge the limits of our bodies, become mentally resilient, and learn to cherish ourselves for the beautiful individuals we are. Along the way, we'll be joined by incredible mentors in the pole and fitness community who will share their wealth of knowledge to help you blossom. This is the Pole Adventures Podcast, and your adventure starts now. Welcome, explorers, to another episode of Pole Adventures. I'm your host, Paris, an eternally struggling pole dancer, here to bring you the wisdom of Shamika Stanley. Shamika is a pole instructor and the founder of the Body Love Movement, where she emphasizes self-love, embracing your uniqueness and sensuality. She helps people use pole as an outlet to feel strong, powerful, and beautiful, which is so in line with this podcast and why I'm so happy to be exploring body image and what it's like to be a curvy pole dancer. So thank you so much for coming on today. And thank you so much for having me, Paris. I appreciate it. Awesome. I'd love for you to tell us a bit about your pole adventure. So what was your why for pole? Yeah, uh, well, you know, I did pole um, because I had an older sister who had a pole party for her birthday. And so following year, I followed suit and absolutely fell in love with it and never gave it up. So my why is because it made me feel good. It made me feel strong, powerful and sexy. And it's just been a growing journey ever since. Yeah. Awesome. A pole party. I never thought of that. <laughs> yeah. It was uh, for my birthday, my 25th birthday. I had a few of my friends. I was like, let me just see what I could do. You know, I was like, I'm going to be, you know, be cute. I didn't realize it was going to be a workout. But I loved every moment of it and, um, you know, haven't stopped polling since it's been eight years um, since I have first touched a poll. So it's been an exciting journey. Yeah. Awesome. That's, that's a great way to get your friends into poll with secretly. Right. Right. Exactly. So book a poll party. <laughs> yeah. And for our fellow nervous beginners, do you have an embarrassing pole moment to share? Um, I mean, I feel like I share a few of them often in my Instagram. Um, but I think as of late, uh, not really embarrassed. <sighs> have I had like a truly embarrassing pole day? I don't know. I think everyone falls off the pole here and there. Um, I've definitely have fallen off the pole. Um, I think I was trying to show someone a trick and actually my pole at home uh shifted and um I did come okay. crashing down I did I did I did break a window oh no yeah I did um so <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that was fun um but I only left with like one scratch, so that was good. <clears throat> Landed with grace. But yeah, I think that's probably my most embarrassing poll moment, but I'm sure I have a few others in there. So the window took the full feet. The window <laughs> did. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. You know, the apartment complex and it asked me questions, thankfully. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it broke by itself. Yeah, I was like, I don't even know how it happened. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So body image is a huge topic within this industry that's you know, traditionally been for thin, athletic and sexy people. And I'm no stranger to this. My number one struggle with pole is actually nothing to do with pole, but like how I view myself, especially when I'm on it. Yeah. So I'd, I'd love for you to tell us a bit about your journey with body image as a curvy pole dancer and how you became so confident. Yeah. Um, you know, I resonate in the same way. When I first started, of course, you know, um, I was the only plus size girl that was going to my studio consistently. Um, so at first, you know, it was a little overwhelming just because everyone did look so different. Um, and also being a minority, that also kind of really made me stick out. Um, but pole was something that I wanted to learn. And I took what I could from it. So Thankfully, with the studio that I started with, there was a lot of focus on understanding the body, sensual movements, really milking movement and stuff like that. So that made me feel good on the inside. And then that translated on the outside. So I just took that and allow that to help build my confidence. So with that, like I would 
you know, dress up more. Sometimes I would throw on makeup, make sure my hair is done, my nails were done. Like I did the things that made me feel good, just like pole made me feel good. And then with time, that just naturally grew my self-confidence in general. Now I don't need all that stuff to feel good. And I can turn my sexy on and off like a light switch if I want to. So um, that that's really what started it for me. And how did you go with, you know, the whole how we have to you know lose more clothes as, as we go <laughs> we go forward, or or taking you know awkward videos of ourselves and like looking back as like oh that's what it looked like. <laughs> well, I'm gonna tell you, I, I was one of those students, those beginners who I was all in for it. Like, oh, I could take off clothes. Okay, let me take off clothes. Oh, I can record myself. I'm gonna record <laughs> myself. So I didn't have that internal battle with myself, but as an instructor, I do see that happen a lot um, with all shapes and sizes of my students. And so one thing um, that I think is important is just having in a very open and welcoming space so that you can learn where you can make mistakes and still feel okay, where you're encouraged to record where you're at so then you can track your progress. Because when I look back at these old videos, like I look at myself, I said, I had the audacity to think that I was amazing. And (laughs) (laughs) and so, you know, and in that space, in that time, I was amazing. I was able to do what I was able to do in that moment. And I loved every second of it. Um, But I definitely look back and I'm like, "Mm, girl. That was that was pretty bad. <laughs> but I can also <laughs> celebrate like where I am now in my movement with my body, my strength and etc. Yeah, that's that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I definitely look at that and go, ooh. Mm, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was not not as great as I thought, but it's you know, it's it's still better than not doing it at all. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, cool. one thing that I tell people is like you're at where you're at, like whatever you're learning, like you got to take it one step at a time. So like I encourage people to record themselves because week to week, you're going to end up progressing as long as you're being consistent. And of course you're using proper technique. And so, um, you know, if I'm teaching someone maybe a step, step spin or around the world or whatever name is right. Uh, when they first do it, they're like, this is terrible. I'm like, no, actually this is absolutely amazing. Like you did great. This is your first time doing it. And then two, three weeks later, they do it again. They're like, yo, like this feels so much better. I was like, and you look better. You look comfortable. So, you know, I do my best as an instructor to celebrate them wherever they're at. And, you know, work to help build on that movement so they can feel more comfortable and, you know, things of that nature. So it's just those little small steps. So when the, the, you know, the negativity, discouragement, comparison stuff does rear its head, what, what did you do? Did you have any strategies for fighting that? Um, Again, I think because of my upbringing, I've had this attitude, like, I don't care what you might think of me. I'm going to do what I love, whether you like it or not. So I'm thankful for having that background. Um, So for me, I was just very clear and candid with people that are in my life to say, hey, this is something that I absolutely love. You don't have to like what I do. You don't have to follow me. You don't have to follow my journey. You don't even have to look at it at all if you don't want to. Um, so I embrace what I do. I embody it. I, I don't shy away with letting people know that I am a pole dancer and I absolutely love it. And I'm team naked all the way. So, you know, for those that don't really have that that outlet or that comfortability to put their foot down, like, I'm, I'm right there to be their backbone, to be their, you know, their cheerleader. Um, unfortunately, I can't, um, I can't make someone feel better or confident, uh, you know, about sharing, you know, what they love with the world. And, you know, if some people have a negative viewpoint on that. It's going to take that person to really dig deep on the inside to really understand that pole is for them and them alone and what they decide to share is 
because they want to express themselves in some way. And that just takes a lot of, you know, self-healing, a lot of self-love and encouragement and really like surrounding yourself around people who are very much like minded. So that can be a, a long, drawn out journey. Um, fortunately for me, I haven't had a lot of issues with negative people and I'm thankful and I'm privileged in that and I recognize that. So I try to be an ally as much as possible for those that might have, you know, a struggle with it. Yeah, it's always great to have that, you know, one or two people in class that are super, that are super cheerleaders. So, you know, we appreciate you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna be like in everyone's video, hyping them up, dancing in their video when they do like the smallest thing. I don't care. Like, that's me. That's that's the only way that I know that I can, you know, leave a positive imprint in someone's life. Um, while they're learning pole, because this shit's hard, man. Hmm. What about for just becoming more comfortable in your own skin? You know, being sensual is something that's quite foreign for a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's really important to really create that space um, for people to be vulnerable. Um, so sometimes that is just kind of taking it slow, um, really teaching people that it's okay to let go and feel good about themselves. Um, one thing I do in my classes is I always tell my students to find themselves in the mirror and to flirt with themselves. And I give them permission to flirt and to feel good and to touch and to, you know, tug and pull out the hair and clothes. Like I open that, um, that space up for them to do that. And each week I can see the growth and the confidence building in each one of my students and I absolutely love it. And then, of course, again, surrounding yourself with like-minded people is going to help, you know, push someone to say, you know what, I can do this and I do feel good and I don't care what anyone says and I'm going to wear that thong or I'm going to wear that crop top and <laughs> I am going to wear those cheeky, those cheeky shorts. Like I tell my students all the time, please do not come to my class fully clothed or I'm going to tell you to strip because you're going to need it. You know, so I make it fun like that, too. So um, but we still have some, you know, I still have some students that are very reserved. And I think that's just, you know, growing up. But, you know, we try to make it as fun as possible and, you know, encourage people to be naked. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, naked. <laughs> do you do you have any favorite ways to? to celebrate people like you know or, or even what we should do to make make sure that we're hyping ourselves up my favorite ways to celebrate people like i said i'm gonna be the one that's loud in your video that's cheering you on that's gonna be dancing in the background once you've been able to get something that you've been working on like that i think that that celebratory um you know action is what make people feel good you know, it's like it's like even when you have some good news and you tell a friend and you want that friend to be just as excited as you. And when they don't return that excitement, then that dumbs down, you know, your news. Right. So it's the same thing yeah. in poll. Like if I can teach someone something and maybe week one, they didn't point their toes, but week two, they're pointing their toes. I am going to celebrate that because I'm like, hey, we're getting somewhere. Like you're getting comfortable in this. So we're going to celebrate that you point at your toes. So, you know, I will celebrate like even those little small things. What about what we can do for like celebrate ourselves? Yeah, absolutely. I tell my students to actually record themselves. And I always tell them to find two things that they really liked about their recording and then find one thing that they could improve on. And that's a way for them to view themselves in a positive way versus looking at this and says, I was absolutely terrible. No, you weren't. Pick out two things that you did really, really good. And then one thing that you can improve on next time and then try to put it all together. The sandwich technique, basically, but for yourself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah, that's a really good way to look at taking like, you know, taking videos of yourself as well, because it. it it's hard not to just look at it and go, oh, and see all the bad stuff. Right. So if you focus on something like that, it's, it, you know, it turns your mind to being, being structurally critic, critic, 
critical. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Instead of, yeah, just being down on yourself. Absolutely. And we're our worst critics, right? So if we start to change yeah. the way that we think, how we view things, then, you know, that can turn your life around, not only just in pole, but just in work life, family life, relationships. Like, I can definitely say pole for me has um, transformed the way that I view the entire world. And how I navigate through different relationships and different situations because pole is such a humbling sport, a humbling artistry that you do have to change your mindset because you, you're not going to get everything the first time you try it. And it might take you a year, two years, six months to nail something down and you got to have that patience with yourself. You have to have discipline. You have to be consistent. And that takes a lot of work mentally and physically and emotionally. So that translates into everything else that you touch in the world. So you have to change your mindset. Yeah. Do you have any you know, mindset tricks that, you, that you've used or you've been taught? You know, you say you've been brought up. That way, maybe your mama had something that that stuck with you to, you know, to help be more mentally resilient. Yeah. Um, a part of before I even started pole, I, I was doing a lot of uh, uh, daily affirmations. And I think that just transcended once I started to do pole. So I say daily affirmations. Look yourself in the mirror. Tell yourself you are the baddest bitch out here. No one can do you like you do you. And I would find things that I didn't really like about myself. And then I highlighted the beauty of it, whether it was something physical, whether it was something internal. And I did that for a while. And that helped me because once you start to say something and you repeat it, you start to believe it. So... I also believe in the power of manifesting everything that you want and your words are so powerful. It holds so much power. So if you tell yourself every day that you're amazing, you're going to do great things today. You're going to start to believe it. And then you start to change the way that you see people, how you see yourself, how you see situations. So that's a way that I've been able to you know, be a positive person as much as possible um, and really change my mindset and really delved into my self-love is with daily affirmations. Yeah, it's interesting because, I mean, I, I definitely know the power of, you know, your words on yourself. They change your subconscious. They really, like, scientifically, it, it is your, your word. <laughs> that whole sticks and stones will break my bones, but words, no names may never hurt me. Like, no, that's so wrong. wrong. They really do. Your words <laughs> so so powerful yeah. but stuff like affirmations and I guess even before I came into this the the whole self self-love and body positivity movement is kind of I guess the way that people have gone about it is is a bit you know roll your eyes like it's in your pictures on Instagram that you that you like or it's just like oh we're gonna say you know I love myself today and it's just very ugh like how how would you get over feeling s silly about all of that yeah yeah I know, I know you probably don't, but I, that's kind of what I struggle with. Like, oh, why would I look myself in the mirror and say that? It just feels like it doesn't work. Yeah, I mean, it, it does feel weird. It does. Um, I think a lot of times we see... Well, it's a bit woo-woo. Sort of yeah, thing. like I, th I think a lot of times, you know, just as humans, we just seek validation from other people and other things. And when you have to validate yourself, it does feel weird at first. It really does. Like, even when I started it, I didn't even realize I was starting a self-love journey until I was like kind of deep into it. And I was like, wait, I've been I've been changing the way that I view myself and and how I feel about myself. So initially, yeah, it was weird. So I did need all the things to make me feel good about myself. So that's where the makeup came in and the hair and the nails and dressing up like I used to put on a face full of makeup to go to work. Now they lucky if I put a bra on to go to work, okay? Like, <laughs> that's where I'm at in life, right? So I did yeah. everything that I needed to do to make myself feel good and to honor me. 
And that goes the same, you know, with anyone else. Like when you do it at first, it does feel weird. But then if you continue to do it, you're like, wait, this feels good. Like I can do this. I can do this. And then to the point where you can take off the material things and then you start to see the beauty that you have that is, you know, beyond, you know, skin deep. You know what I'm saying? So it's like it is weird. It's awkward. You're like, why am I doing this? Uh, but then if you continue to do it, you're gonna like, okay, I feel good today. Yeah. It, it's like a muscle yes. that you have to train. And yeah, I guess, I guess you could see it as, you know, you just got to practice mm-hmm. and it will, it will get yeah. better. And someday you won't have to use the crap. Absolutely. <laughs> and I, I truly and wholeheartedly believe that I really do. Yeah. And if there's just one thing you could let every pole dancer know, what would it be? Mm, I might have a few. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, you you have to be consistent. Whatever goals that you have set for yourself, you must be consistent with training. Um, the only way that you're going to get strong is if you train to be strong. As much as we love to just feel sexy and roll on the floor and dance in heels and, you know, shake our asses. Um, If you want if you (laughs) want to do the hard stuff, you have to you have to strength train. There's no way around that. Um, Give yourself grace. You have to give yourself grace. Some things are not going to come easy. Some things are. Um, So give yourself grace. Allow yourself to make mistakes so you can grow and learn. And I think my last one is use yo meat. Oh my God, use yo meat. Okay. <laughs> so, especially for my thickums, for real, for my thickums, you got to use the meat. The pole loves meat. So, we're going to use that to our advantage. It works, I promise. Yeah, it, it does. Yeah. Thick thighs, or <laughs> they, they grip better. And do. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yes, they do. So, um, you know, that's something that I repeat in my class all the time is use your meat. So that's the reason why we're taking off clothes. Like, no, I need you to have yeah. all of this exposed and I need your cheeks out because we, we need to use our booty cheeks today. So, yes, use your meat. <laughs> damn it. OK, Paul loves it. <laughs> yeah, I love that. And I know you have some of your online classes in coaching. Would you like to let us know a bit more about yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. So you can find me on Instagram at Utter Beauty. So that's U-T-T-E-R-B-E-A-U-T-Y, all one word. I do um, private uh, poll sessions. Um, I can do them in person or virtually. We can work on strengthening and conditioning, flexibility, choreo. We can um, really kind of do whatever it is that you like to do. I I know a little something about something. So I am more than happy to assist those that would like to learn from me. And my link is in my bio on my page. So that's how you find my my scheduling. All, all, all the links will be p- below, so make sure to go check that out, guys. And Shamika, thank you so much for being our guide on body image, and thanks to everyone for tuning thank in. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Well, we've reached the end of our adventure today, so until next time, remember to stay strong, keep pushing your limits, and embrace your individual journey. Don't forget to grab your free access to the Pole Adventures Compendium, a collection of incredible resources to help you progress on your pole journey. And if you enjoyed today's adventure, make sure to leave a review so other explorers can embark on the journey with us. This is the Pole Adventures podcast, and your next adventure awaits. Bye.